and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Need a roll call and a uh, determination of uh, quorum. I don't have a mic, so, <laughs> but. You're loud enough. <laughs> okay. Here's, here's one right here. Okay. Laurent. Here. Lamb. Here. Reared. Here. Mr. Sable's excused. Mr. Cummins is excused. Mr. Zenyuk is excused. Smith. Here. Van Portfleet. Here. Young. Here. There is a quorum. Thank you. Um, what we need to do is the approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Second. We've got, a, we've got a motion to approve the agenda and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oops. The agenda is approved. Approval of the minutes from, uh, we'll, we'll take it in two different pieces. We'll do uh, the regular meeting of November 1st. So we're looking for approval of the minutes for November 1st. Move to approve minutes. Second. We got um, a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of the minutes of the uh, Planning Commission special meeting on November 18th, 2021. We're looking for a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion. Second it. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the public comments for non-agenda items only. Do we have anyone for non-agenda items only tonight? Okay, it does not look like we have anybody for non-agenda agenda items only tonight. We'll move on to the public hearing. This is one, uh, 141 East Elizabeth Apartments preliminary PUD plan. And I think um, you have to recruit yourself. I think you have to give me permission. I give you permission. It has to be a motion. I'm sorry? It has to be a motion. I make a motion that we refuse it. Uh, Mr. Baird. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, public hearing. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six people that uh, wanted to talk in the public hearing. So we're going to start with uh, Timothy Brogoski. Did I get it right, Timothy? Excuse me. You need to have a motion to open the public hearing. First. I'm sorry. That's okay. Thank like, you. I'd like to make a open the public hearing. Second. All in favor of opening the public hearing? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. I'll go back till we get uh, six people. And uh, first one on the li list is uh, Timothy Brodowski. Please give me your your name and uh, your address, please. Uh, Timothy Brodowski, 2024 Chestnut Circle, Lake Orion. Uh, four three six zero. <clears throat> Is it okay if I use this computer? I yeah. Assume? yeah. Okay. Looks just like mine. It's okay. I'll scroll down to the oh, the uh, comments uh, in the review letter by McKenna, dated uh, December third. Is that okay if we just walk through those and review yes. or? Yeah. Okay. Just check. <clears throat> um, we've, had, we've got a few more uh, folks here in the audience that uh, I don't think have uh, sorry, uh, been privy to the plans yet. Um, the uh, proposed development is a 16-unit uh, um, uh, three-story apartment building uh, over on Elizabeth Street that would uh, uh, require the demolition of the existing uh, 3,100 or so square foot uh, home that's there at the moment. Um, we've been uh, before the board now, I think, three times, possibly two, um, uh, to go over the development and uh, address the concerns that uh, have been brought up by the uh, 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 township's plan review. Uh, at this time, um, after again going through uh, uh, some of the the comments, we can just walk through, uh, I believe it's items, well, the items that you see here on the screen. 
Um, first one being the uh, the two bedroom units that uh, do not provide natural light into the kitchen, living, or dining. Um, we have looked at that. There, there's minimal options, uh, as has been discussed in the past, with um, uh, egress requirements for um, uh, for these uh, two bedroom units and. Um, with those uh, with those bedrooms obviously occupying the exterior uh, wall of the uh, uh, of the building itself, the uh, the ability to bring in um, uh, additional natural light would be difficult with uh, with windows. We have placed uh, doors to the bedroom directly Mr. across. Excuse me. Is this a public hearing? Yes. Um, are we hearing a presentation by the developer? I, I I'm not sure if you, you you all tell me. It sounds like we are. Yeah, I don't believe this is the appropriate venue okay. for that, if I might might say. This is a public hearing to hear comments at 141. Should others come to the podium first rather than me? I, I don't believe it's the appropriate venue for you to make a presentation about okay. the items you guys have yet to complete on the list. Okay. There's like a numerous deficiencies. Right, Joe? This is a public no, hearing? No, it's a public hearing. Okay. Which anyone can speak. I think it would be helpful to go over the plan so that the comments made by the audience during the public hearing could be have some enlightenment as to what the project is. Sure. I, I think he's addressing the comments, and it's a waste of time because we. It's a public hearing. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Maybe just jumping down to the plans themselves and check. I. Yes. Uh, might keep in mind, sir, that during the um, public hearing here that we're having, that there's no deliberation or um, yeas or nays as far as uh, what needs to be done or if we're going to accept. Um, so I, I thought where you might be best in this would be um, Plan discussion, commission discussion, and recommendations, which was two on our um, agenda on this item. At that point, if we had questions, I don't disagree. It's up to you. If you'd like to still continue and I'd um, rather not, because again, these items I, I do feel like are, are things that we've already addressed to the board and a little bit granular for for the audience. If uh, it'd be more acceptable for the audience to come up um, and voice their opinions. I think that would that would work. Okay, I like that idea. Thank you. Thank you. Pat Ballalat. Ballalat. Did I get that right, Pat? I tr I tried really hard. What? Patricia Balla. Patricia Balla. Thank you, Patricia. One twenty-five West Elizabeth. And most of my. Questions really go to Mr. Robert, which you've excused, I guess. And so I heard both that these could be apartments or condos, and I am assuming now that they're apartments. True? <laughs> well, yeah, they're apartments. If he can't talk, then I might as well. Um, not not talk either because everything that I have is directed to him. Or you could ask what our knowledge may be. Yeah, please uh, raise as, concerns. Is it apartments or condominiums? And Mr. Their apartments. Uh, decided. Mentioned um, apartments. Is there going to be an on-site manager of these apartments? Oh, he can't talk. You people probably don't know that. And we don't, we don't. Ha I don't have an answer for that. Oh. Well, you're not going to have an answer for any of these then, because the, it's all about the parking. You can put the questions on the record, and then yeah. they could address them. Right. Mr. Chair, will there be adequate parking, or will the residents already living on Elizabeth have to fight for our street parking? You don't know that. From what I from what I understand, there's two parking spots per apartment. Per apartment. Per apartment. And I read in something that was online 
that it made, there were no parking spaces for visitors, which certainly people in apartments even have visitors occasionally. Yeah, that's. We, Are they going to be we parking need to in we our need to parking address that. places? We need to address that. We have that on. I don't our, have a driveway, and I have two spots on that I can park in front of my house, which. Um, if those are used by other people, it's not going to make me very happy. Um, and I, I guess that's all, because it seems like you're not going to have answers. I'll talk to Mr. Roberts another time. May I ask you a question? Your address again, ma'am? 125. I'm right next door. Is this the house that is in between the two? It is, which makes me so happy to have all these apartments going in, it just is overwhelming, believe me. Well, the drive, driveway, is the existing driveway going to be the only entrance and exit to those units? Anybody know? At right now the plans, apologize, right now the plans call for the one entrance and exit. The existing one is gonna be it? Be At least that's driveway. the one that's proposed to us. Yeah, there'll be a new driveway, uh, commercial style driveway, and simultaneous entry and exit. Do you have any idea where the water runoff is going to go from the parking area? Is it going to come into my basement? I believe they'll address that in their final plans and they'll meet. There will be, that will be addressed by engineering design. And there had been attempts to utilize, whether it's capable or not, we don't know, to utilize the retention pond that's west of there. That the school apartments are going to use also, right? No. The one behind uh, the pharmacy there. And so that will be addressed, though, by engineering. It won't be overlooked. It won't be my basement. Do you have that problem now? No. Okay. No, I, I have a walkout basement and it goes down and so I've never had a water problem. So hopefully I don't. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, John McGraw? Uh, I just signed it. I'm actually speaking in a different thing, so. Okay. Uh, Tom Truerig? Tom Traurig, uh, 112 West Elizabeth Street. I live straight across the street from Pat, who just talked. Out my door, to the left, kitty corner, is the Eman Center, and to the right will be uh, the Reards' uh, new apartment complex if it goes through. Um, if the Reards are able to satisfy the requirements of the Planning Commission and the Village Council, uh, I'm in full support of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Corey Johnston. Uh, Corey Johnston, 108 Evergreen Trail. I didn't plan on speaking, I just signed in the list. Uh, I would like to say uh, that I've been involved in Planning Commission meetings before and I think an introduction would be helpful to the public in general for this project or any project because while the information is online, not everyone goes online and reads it. And an explanation is always helpful. Uh, the drawings are here, people can look at them so that they better understand them for those who don't understand planning and construction issues. So just a recommendation for the board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your recommendation. Robin Johnston. Okay. Is, is there anyone else that uh, wants to uh, speak on the uh, uh, 141 Elizabeth Street Apartments? Okay. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the uh, public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.
Um, there is no old business tonight. We're going to go to new business. And the uh, first one on new business is the Lake Orange Lumberyard Redevelopment Project presentation. Mr. Chair. Point of order. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I wanted to just take the opportunity, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chair, that's it for this discussion on that property tonight. So it's not on the agenda. Correct. Any further for any other discussion for the 141 Elizabeth Street, it was just the conducting of the public hearing this evening and that just happened. Yes. And if there's those, no other discussion on that item on the agenda this evening. That's correct. I just want to make everybody aware. Okay. We are, we are back to the Lake Lumber Lumberyard Development presentation. And who's presenting? John McGraw from River Caddis Development. How is everyone tonight? Thanks for having me. Thank um, you. So I, we have a uh, drawing up, and <clears throat> what I'd like to do is just give a little background uh, up front, let you know kind of how I got here tonight, and then I've also brought our architect as well to kind of walk through the how of the site plan, and then hopefully we'll be able to open this up to discuss any <clears throat> underlying issues that you're seeing, talk about goals and objectives uh, of everybody on, on this commission and by the end of this get a pretty good direction for our next steps going forward so we can be as efficient as possible. Um, <clears throat> so again, my name is John McGraw from River Caddis Development. Um, River Caddis Development is a family company started by my father in 2008, brought me on in 2012. Uh, we have eight people in our firm. Uh, we're based out of East Lansing, so not, not a large firm by, um, by any meaning, but we've developed in seven different states in many different sectors of development and real estate from municipal to, uh, uh, to parking structures to um, <clears throat> market rate housing, student housing, mixed income housing, uh, to mixed use to uh, um, mixed typology in, in residential and commercial. And we're, um, <clears throat> we've been looking across Michigan for, for unique destinations for, for places to live, uh, places that you, uh, you can't, <clears throat> that have these built-in amenities already here. And when we visited Lake Orion, because again, we're not, not from here, um, but when we visited, actually my brother and uh, uh, Jake and my uh, director of construction, um, Dan, is also here. And my brother and I visited, we both have small kids. Uh, I have three little kids and we spent the day in the park uh, and then went out to lunch afterwards and could feel how nice it would be to live in a town very similar to this. Uh, so that was the kind of genesis or the inception of this idea to start working with the, the owners of the Lake Orion Lumber Company. We spent a lot of time with them trying to figure out what their goals and objectives are as, as a business and as a family. Uh, and very nice folks. <clears throat> After coming to a deal, we've spent uh, quite a few meetings with the uh, with staff here to understand the community, the DDA, to understand goals and objectives, to understand kind of where you folks want to go. So I'm not just bringing a plan and saying, hey, how do we get this done? Uh, we spent a lot of time understanding how to achieve things together collaboratively as a group. Uh, and that's, <clears throat> you know, how, how we've been successful as, as a family and a business is from reputation and from working together. We're, we don't promise that we're the best at everything, uh, but we have uh, big ears and we, we try to use them. We try to listen, we try to learn, and we try to implement these designs through, uh, through unique structures, both uh, financially and, uh, and legally. And then we work with the folks to try to deliver on a plan that complements the area and appreciates values around and enhances living for not just the people who live in our development, but around. <clears throat> now, as a, as a company, 
we, uh, we finance in-house. Uh, so when it comes to uh, understanding what type of group we are, I'm not a purchase the land and flip kind of company. Uh, we've never bought a piece of land and held it. Uh, we, when we close on the land, we're usually ready to put a shovel on the ground and build. Uh, so that speaks a little bit about us. In terms of holding an asset or holding a development, uh, all of our developments we plan on building to hold long term. However, we have had other instances where uh, REITs or other companies have came along and uh, gave an unsolicited offer and from there we, we've ended up selling some of our assets but a majority of them we still own and still uh, operate. So we are the owner, investor, operator, and we put that same love into the design. And so we're, we're focused on the, you know, the energy and sustainability of that development, but also creating something that doesn't cost more to operate. It's built better, stronger for longer and more efficient. So just a little bit about kind of us as an overview. Don't want to take up the whole time. Um, and what I'd like to do is let Pete from Progressive a &E, our uh, architect, come up and explain um, our philosophy in this site plan and what we're trying to accomplish. And hopefully, if, if time allows and uh, the process allows, for us to get some feedback on what we've drawn today, what we've brought and uh, then we can integrate some of those things that uh, you guys are seeing that, or that want us to change. So I'm going to have Pete come up now. Thanks, John. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking the time tonight to uh, review our proposal. So um, I'm with Progressive AE, and we're an uh, AE firm from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, Personally, I, I'm, I'm from Grand Haven, which is a town probably the same size as this town, Lake Orange. And um, so before we got, we got here early and took a drive through downtown, and I, I must compliment you, you have quite a beautiful downtown in terms of building and scale and the neighborhoods and the con connectivity. And, and that's something, you know, as we started developing uh, a design for this piece of property, that's something that we really wanted to, to keep in mind. Um, as you know, we're, we're looking for a planned unit development on, on this piece of property. And, um, you know, as we designed, we went through the ordinance and really tried to um, uh, keep within the spirit of the ordinance of some of the things that the ordinance states, such as, and I can start with the site plan. Uh, as you can see, we, we show four buildings, and really, uh, the way the buildings are placed on site, we try to capitalize on the best views to the green space, to the lake across uh, Highway 24, um, as, as well as trying to keep the, all of the parking to the interior. So you can see that the, uh, the, the perimeter um, has an adequate and sufficient amount of landscaping, which is important to us. We're using that and taking advantage of any of the green space uh, inside the parcel um, for amenities. And then also, uh, as you know, we have the regional bike trail here too which is something that we, we totally support and want to be mindful of, that we're not changing it, we're actually enhancing it. Um, and I can get into that in a little bit. Um, so talking about the buildings themselves, so as you come into the project off Highway 24, building number two, we envision that to be a single story building, single story to a story and a half. And that would be our community building that we're proposing. And inside that would be a leasing office, a workout space, some offices, and some recreational spaces inside the building. And we're also alluding to a, an outdoor patio in this lawn panel. Um, because that curb cut comes onto uh, Highway 24, we wanted to keep a clear vision open both ways, just in terms of safety. Uh, that's really important. We indicate a sign, so that would be really the ceremonial entry to the project. 
backed up by, uh, by landscaping, and you can see with adequate uh, stacking space before you get into the, into the first parking bays. Um, in addition to that, we're showing some amenities uh, on the northwest corner of this, this particular site, and we envision that to be um, a pool, maybe some outdoor seating areas, um, and then we, we wanted to orient all of these and connect with that uh, Paint Creek uh, open space to the northeast. We thought that was important. Um, we haven't developed the architecture for the building yet, but what we envision is some transparency uh, on this facade because there could be a lot of activity with a, um, with a workout center there. We just wanted to engage the street and the sidewalk and really you've already have a nice uh, streetscape established in the village. We want to pick up on that cue and, and actually try to implement maybe those same elements um, along the front of the building to, to encourage the pedestrians and future residents of the project to take advantage of that and, and, and be able to walk to the village to the, the, the different restaurants and shops that you have. So going interior to the building, we've got a, a convenience parking lot for the community building. And then we show, this is an apartment project, basically a, a market rate rental apartment project. So we show three buildings, and at this point they're just building envelopes. But uh, each one of the buildings, uh, just talking about a range, is about 40 units per building. So we're looking at, uh, total about 120 to 125 units on the site. Uh, it's about a 4.0 acre site, um, so that would be, um, and we can talk about that, it would be a density in the area of maybe 24 or 25 units to the acre. Um, in addition to those, we again, we place these buildings because those residents would have great views over the park and, and, and beyond. Um, um, past the fire station to the park and the playground, so we, we thought that was ideal. This building below, it's the same thing. You can look across the parking lot and capture great views of the lake um, to the west. We've also included uh, some carports just for convenience. That, uh, that could be an opportunity for uh, future residents living there. And um, we think traffic dispersal is very important uh, on a project like this based on the number of units that we have. So here's our main entry, but then we're taking advantage of the south entry where we connect to Atwater Street. As, as you all know, there's a traffic signal right there and we really want to leverage that, particularly um, for, uh, for southbound traffic too. So obviously this project will have to be reviewed by MDOT, but um, we think it's a pretty good, in terms of uh, stacking room to the light, we think that's, that's adequate distance and uh, we hope that MDOT is gonna look at this favorably. Uh, in addition to that, some of the other amenities uh, include uh, number four in this open area is a, uh, is a dog park uh, with a possible uh, rest station uh, off the trail uh, as well to take advantage of that. A lot of landscaping and buffering between the two residential uses and between the, uh, between the trail as well. Um, Stormwater is always a concern, so uh, part of the uh, stormwater system that we're looking at right here, possibly here as well, as well as um, the green strip uh, down the center of the parking. And we're looking at it from a civil engineering standpoint, uh, a, a sustainable approach, maybe with uh, a, a rain gardens uh, and, and things like that. Basically, you know, um, permeable areas for, uh, for stormwater to, to improve the quality. Um, Overall, uh, we feel that uh, it's, it's an appropriate project based on the land use. Um, obviously, if you, if you read our write-up, uh, there would be a lot of benefits to the village in, in terms of um, 
uh, providing uh, affordable housing, market rate housing apartments, as, and obviously as well as bringing a new project uh, onto the tax rolls of the village and, and really uh, eliminating a piece of property that has been there for years and uh, you know suffers from some environmental issues too, which would obviously be part of this project, cleaning that up and, and, and making, the, uh, making the site developable. So um, yeah, with that, I think I'll, I'll, uh, I'll close. If there are any questions, John, um, we'd be glad to answer them, um, either from a development or a, a design standpoint. Yeah, if I, if I could just add a couple more things in uh, that I either forgot to mention or, or just didn't at the time. Um, <clears throat> just a, a couple approaches to the density uh, in the parking, um, which, you know, we, we filled the site. It's a 4.68 acre site, and we took a massing study uh, in, in or a yield study, which basically says, you know, what can we fit on this site that, that is close to zoning code? And, and we did that for the main reason um, we have a lot of historical data on this property from an environmental standpoint. And this used to be an old filling, coal and oil filling station um, <laughs> prior to it being a lumber yard. And we have historical data from many places across the United States as well as Michigan from our environmental team, PM, uh, that can point out to similarities. So we can get some upfront costing as to soils, as to contaminants, as to what we have to do to the buildings to wrap it, to, to remediate, to take away soils, and they're, they're very extensive. Right, so if it's me or if it's a future developer that's coming in later down the road, um, environmental remediation has to happen to develop this property. And we're not really entirely sure how bad it is, but we know it's not good. Uh, River Caddis, my, my family, my, my father started off as a, as a litigator um, in Lansing and he used to represent municipalities, which kind of gave us that approach of asking municipalities what they would like to see uh, in their community, how, how can we help kind of approach. And he used to uh, set up their brownfields, he used to set up their land use policies, he used to do environmental law. So we have a lot of background in this. We're, uh, we're doing another project actually in Grand Haven in Kalamazoo, we've done one in uh, East Lansing and in Midland, Michigan that are all very extensive brownfield contaminated properties. So we're very familiar with the state policies, the legislature, and how to get through them. So we're a very qualified team in terms of past experience on how to take a contaminated property. In fact, we, we look for them uh, because it's kind of a niche where a smaller company, a bigger company that's trying to do more projects may overlook and say that is a challenge. So by putting more density and, and which I know it, it, it's more than you are used to because you, you say density across the United States and everybody has a different opinion of, of what that is. But I do think that uh, it, with the right design uh, and the right architecture and aesthetic, I think that we can really pull together a really smart design that doesn't have to look too dense for this area. We understand that this is, uh, what type of town this is from, from 10,000 feet, right? And I don't want to put in really big buildings that are blocky, and I know you're looking at squares today, but the design aesthetic with breakups and design and materials, we're very good at. We're very, uh, take a very intentional approach. And by putting in more dense, uh, a more dense development, we're able to point to different ways of solving for the contamination issue which is super extensive and millions and millions of dollars. It's not a couple hundred thousand. So we are trying to solve that through Brownfield. And we're gonna do that through the county, which we're very familiar with working with Oakland County on that. Uh, we've talked to the DDA about this process. There is, uh, there is money to be uh, <clears throat> captured for this type of project uh, and we believe of looking at this between 117 to 125 units, which is the 50% plus the 20%, we believe that will allow us to get to something that helps cover our, um, our contamination and our costs for this type of development. Uh, and then finally, the parking is the last thing that I wanted to touch on really quick. Uh, we have, uh, today we have 117 units with 189 stalls, which is just a little bit over 1.5 stall per, per unit. Um, our, our unit mix is going to be heavier on the studios and ones, and then we, we're gonna have some twos. 
um, but no, nothing above a two bedroom for, for now. And we're, we still have to finalize a complete market study to, to do that. And we're going through our uh, unit matrix. Um, and, and absolutely willing to hear input on, on that matrix. Um, but across the country, uh, parking's, <laughs> parking's one of the things that stops developments. It's a real challenging issue no matter where you go. I mean, if you're in Nashville, Tennessee, or Boise, Idaho, or Ann Arbor, it doesn't matter where, where you're at, parking is something that you gotta take care of. And there's different stances from less parking to more parking to parking maximums to parking minimums. And here we're looking at uh, asking to go from a two uh, stall per unit to 1.5, which we find nationally is, is justified because we're, we're playing with this, um, this balance of not having a sea of parking and not having not enough parking. Because if I don't have enough parking, then my development is hard, <laughs> it's hard to lease. Uh, and if I don't lease it, then I have a lot of challenges there, right? So if I have too much parking, then we have too much concrete, we have too much asphalt, and it looks empty. And we also don't want that. So we want to try to find the balance. And that's, we do that, in our opinion, from across the nation, 1.5 units, 1.5 stalls per unit is, especially for the type of buildings that we're building, is, is adequate parking. So uh, those are the kind of things that we're looking at today, and I'll, I'll be quiet and I'll hopefully get some feedback. Is there any uh, questions for these guys? Uh, first of all, I believe we eliminated that 20%. <laughs> Mr. Chair, we do, I do own the two buildings next to it, so I would love to see this project happen. But I'm stuck with two parking spaces per unit, and I personally, I, I won't go off that. I, I did it, for, I'm doing it for mine, and I would expect that for everybody else. Third of all, again, I'd like to, the concept, but I don't know that 15 units per acre plus the 20% or whatever includes you know, the ability to have a community center addition. You know, in the, in the square footage, I guess it is to say. So, uh, I do think that it's something that you need to talk with the planner, maybe a little more in depth. I don't know if anybody else has anything to say here on this board, but um, that's my opinion. Okay. Mr. McPorf, please. The uh, Planning Commission has moved the PUD additional 20% consideration of the Village Council um, taking it out of the PUD regulations and moved it on to the Village Council for public hearing, which is the next step. Correct, Mr. Young? Yes. Then after that, it would be voted upon by the Village Council. <clears throat> so general flavor, it appears, is that 20% might be removed, which would still allow 15 plus 50 percent, which would be 22 per acre, which still would allow you approximately about a 98 unit development, which then allows the, because you have 190 parking places, it allows the parking, and there's a couple extra for uh, use for guest parking. So it kind of fits. The trouble for me, and, and, I, and I like River Caddis. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> I like the credentials. I like the people that have come and visited. I like their concern for the community that they've exhibited and <clears throat> believe they'll do a good job. I think that they're a good fit, much like we have with another PUD for this project. But the one thing in the last public hearings with the last project, people that came and supported it and people that came in against it, the biggest thing that everybody mentioned was density. They would say, I'm in support of the project, but I see, I'd like to see a little bit less density. I'm against the project, I don't like the density. 
I'm against the project, there's other issues, I don't like the density. That was the one thing I walked away with from those public hearings was the community at large is concerned about the rural aspect of the community and density. So you've got that before you <clears throat> as far as the possibility of the 20% option being removed. This parcel is a gateway in our community. It's much different than other parcels because as you come in right where you have the uh, one story community building, that's a higher <coughs> representation of the community. <coughs> the buildings that are, are going to be built there, <coughs> the stacking, the parking, the, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the ingress, the egress will all be big considerations. There will be a, a big change in traffic flow. Again, density, a lower density could help that. But the trouble I have, because I'd like to be able to support you more, is you've done a phase one remediation, you have not done a phase two, and we're kind of guessing. We're kind of guessing on how deep it is, and, and I don't, I'm not in your office, but, um, and it's gotta be difficult, I'm sure, because here you are thinking, well, the phase one is gonna probably be a lot worse, here's the past history that we know of, and so it could have a range of 2.5 to 5 million, <coughs> what I'll bet your discussions are. But we don't know if it's 5 million or 2.5, and it might all fit. So I'm, I'm not sure that we have, nor you, have all the information you need really to try to move forward. And then I look at the financing options. I still don't know what your expectations are for the community to participate, tax abatements. I know we, there's Brownfield. What is all that? I, so there's a lot of unknowns to me. Uh, I'd like to see that gateway improved uh, besides something other than a, a, a workout office building. My first thoughts were uh, a pay for parking deck that could be shared. I know that's been looked at before, but this community needs to move to pay for parking. It could be a revenue source for you. That's probably way out there, though, way out there. But um, I, I don't know how to help you because I don't know all the specifics and I will say that the density is too high and it's a gateway. The only other question I have that is somewhat smaller detail than anything else is the current trailway is fenced. It is separate of the actual uh, lumber yard. Is that going to remain that way? Well, that, that's one in the many discussions that we would have. Okay. I, okay. I'm not against either position. So if you said, hey, we want that to remain fenced, that's one route we go. Right. If you want to include that into the development so it's seamless and it allows more walkability and connectivity, I'd be more for that. But again, open. Small detail. All right, okay. That's my uh, quick comments. Um, Thank you. I have uh, one question on, and I don't know how to show it to you guys. If you, if you look at this space here, mm -hmm. you know, I walk through there all the time because I go over to the art center, and there's a bridge there, and I know that this com this side of it comes right down, looks like it comes right down the path. Mm -hmm. But then you get to the end here, and there's this, and even in that property. There seems to be a fenced off, closed off piece of property within that property. Right, Joe? Yes, it's owned by MDOT. Oh, that's owned by it's MDOT. It's their water yeah. retention oh. area. Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind. It's a flood, floodway. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Floodplain? What? It's a floodplain, so even if we tried flood to. Floodplain, yeah, water retention. Even right. if we tried to <laughs> okay. assemble it. Because and, and I, I could never figure out what that was. Yeah, MDOT. Okay. okay. Are there any other questions? Yeah, Hank, I got a couple small Mr. comments. Mr. Lamb? Hi, I'm Mike Lamb. We've talked before. Good to see I, you. I really am impressed with your company, and, and I like your professional approach to the project. And, and uh, I also have had a you know, rude um, awakening over the last six months, you know, being new to the Village Council and the Planning Commission, I was, really wasn't 
fully familiar with the PUD ordinances and a lot of the village ordinances. And you know, I, I chose to vote on some projects that I probably would have changed some of my <coughs> position about. The, uh, so with that education and the public hearings we've had for the other projects, I also concur with um, some of the concerns about the density. You know, everyone in the community um, appears to, not everyone, but a large portion of the community respects the fact that everyone has the right to develop their property in the manner of our zoning ordinance and such. What I have noticed though is I, I think the, the PUD ordinance has been a little bit abused and it's just being used as a vehicle for higher density. And the PUDs that we've, I've approved or, or been part of, um, that's what they've been, vehicles for higher density. And there's no real benefit being offered to the community except a few check boxes on a form. So these PUD plans that, that we've been running through here, really, they don't offer anything for the community. Um, with your site right now, it looks like a standard apartment complex with standard parking, with nice landscaping, with nice amenities, and it looks like a very professional, nice apartment complex. But as we said, the density is higher than what we currently are allow or want to allow. The parking is a little bit low, but it's getting better. Um, but I've been involved a lot with trying to determine you know, what's going to go on with the DDA and, and how all these special areas are to be accommodated in the future land use plan. And I, I would love to see a White Castles, okay, <laughs> right there uh, where you're, you know, there's a gateway to our community where, you know, people could come here and get something to eat, okay, or, or get some drinks. Apparently the, the, our downtown is being developed as a new restaurant place, place to go. We have parties in the streets. We allow public drinking, mm -hmm. and we have many new restaurants. I would think, in order to extend this type of you know, walking community, people walk forever in our community. Mm -hmm. And my wife walked a mile and a half across town to go visit me at a job site. Um, so I think, you know, it, it, with our use and, and our intentions, I, I think that some type of commercial use along the M24 corridor would be appropriate. Now, I do understand that we may be getting other plans with other multi-unit developments on M24 that will not be commercial. I understand, I think a big project is coming, so I can't stress that, but. So I don't, I don't really see any special benefits of this property that would even want me to um, be in support of a PUD hmm. at this point. I mean, um, I think you're on a basic zoning ordinance. If the PUD ordinance disappeared, you'd be entitled to 69 units, mm -hmm. I think, under the 15 units per acre. So I don't know if that's viable. Um, I also have concerns about the financing. Uh, Mr. Young hasn't brought any financing things to us. I have a really big concern in our community uh, there's a lot of talk about tax abatements. I'm not really in favor of tax abatements. Um, there's a lot of talk about benefits to the community. Um, this project falls fully within the DDA district, so none of the revenues or taxes from this will come to the village people. Any additional revenues will just go to the Downtown Development Authority for them to have more activities downtown. So I'm not seeing the, what I'm trying to point out is I'm not seeing the overall benefit to the community for support of a PUD. That's the point I'm making. But I, I think it's a beautiful looking project and very professional. And if I was renting, I wouldn't mind living there. But those are my current concerns, so. Would you mind if I addressed a couple? Sure. If the chair. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, I, Okay, um, so, <clears throat> well, when we talk about overall benefit, right, we're gonna bring in people. We're gonna have people that are gonna be living downtown, walking through the streets, right? You're gonna energize the city more than what it currently is. Those people are also going to visit downtown, they're gonna spend money downtown. You're gonna have taxes downtown, you're gonna have property taxes downtown. Those property taxes downtown, not only in, in this type of project are not going to be going to the DDA, <clears throat> how we're going to do this, we're, we're not looking for a, a tax abatement. We're not looking for tax free. We're looking to use our taxes, which we pay them, and then we get reimbursed for a portion 
Okay, that's, that's part of the Brownfield uh, tax incentive financing. Right? We'll walk through all of that with, with everybody. Um, but guaranteed taxes being paid to the schools, to the police, to the fire, those things are all being paid. You know, this isn't tax-free property. We're not asking for gifts. We're not asking for any additional taxes to be given to us from other properties. We're using the density on our project to pay for a contaminated piece of ground that will not be developed. It won't be. It is very contaminated. And if it's, as I said earlier, if it's not me, it's, it's, it's likely not going to be someone else. And we're, we're trying to put in the density to make a project viable, but also put people butts in the seats at downtown. You know, we, we want those people to come and visit Ed's and Wine Social and 20 Social and all of these other restaurants. What, what I ask is how, does that, how is that really benefiting the average citizen in the village? I understand. We, well, if they lose the restaurants, we, if the restaurants don't have enough people going to them, then they close. I mean, we're, we're facing this issue across the United States where there isn't enough employees, and then they can't fill the restaurants. And we're having all of these different issues across the board. And what we're trying to do is infuse more people into a downtown where they can step outside their door, walk across the path, and be at a restaurant. I mean, who wouldn't want that? Right? And then across the street, you have a lake. So you have all these built-in amenities. And I, and I think... I, like I said, I, I see more left-turn traffic, more accidents in my weekly police report. <clears throat> yeah. I see more people crowding the streets. I, I don't see any benefit f for development projects, high-density development projects, to the average village citizen. I can see the benefits to the village. Mm -hmm. I can see the benefits to the budget of the Downtown Development Authority, but currently the way things are structured in the village, none of the tax revenues of these properties go into the hands of the village. They go into the hands of the Downtown Development Authority. Not one single dime of the taxes will go to the village of Lake Boyd. They will go to a subsidiary organization called the Downtown Development Authority. Mm -hmm. That's where all the tax revenues go now. I've asked that this be addressed. Perhaps this property could come out of the Downtown Development Authority and the village could get some benefit of the tax revenues. Then we'd be talking. Then we'd be talking turkey is what we call that right now. I, I do think that we can address that together. So these, I'm just trying to make, yeah. I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to give you a couple of my points that I really am flocked yeah, onto absolutely. in this community about getting some more money into the hands of the citizens to take care of their needs. So it's a compli very complicated issue. Yes, it is. It's a very complicated project in, in a lot of regard. So I, I appreciate your comments. Those are going to be helpful for us going forward. I think our, our end goal is to find out if we should um, thank you for your time and, and, and walk from this. I mean, because if, and that's, that's the issue that we've been working through the last few months okay. is we love the owners. <laughs> they're, they're a wonderful family. We'd really like to do right by them. We love this town. But it presents a lot of challenges. And if we're presenting a plan where we, we have a viable option, but it's not liked, we get it. I don't want to be the square peg in a round hole of this relationship. I really don't. I really do think that we can provide a lot of value in, in, in fixed traffic, uh, you know, prove that we, we have a viable traffic plan, that the, the density is qualified, because at the end of the day, I'm afraid that this will go through. At worst case, it'll be the bookend that is blighted, that will have no business at it, and it will sit there and go through multiple arrays and different RFP processes through the city and state before it's given away. And you could have done this seven years ago, which was today, which is not the first time that's happened in Michigan. So I get it. If you don't want us here, that's Really, that's what, kind of why I stepped in today, is how we look at this. <coughs> so. Mr. Chair? Yes. Is there important for you? Um, we do have some current information that we'd be willing to share on a creative level about that possibility of removing this area from the tax capture that provides no benefit to the village directly. So that would be a discussion because as you look at creative, like you just mentioned, trying to be creative, that might be something that we could work on together. I actually believe with a similar plan, or close to it, 
right? Let's, if we could work through, if, if we had a group that was just like, listen, I like the, I like the development group in front of us. Uh, we believe that they're collaborative and that they can solve problems. Um, I have a viable plan to address both of what you're talking about. We've already kind of discussed it, um, where it, it's, it's touching on both of what you're talking about, about money going to the DDA and not, uh, and it's through, it's through Brownfield. And um, it's, I, don't, I don't think that's the avenue, but I'd be glad to talk about it more. Absolutely. I just want to make one comment. I spent some time researching you guys, and again, appreciated uh, what you've done up to this point and the company that you guys are and, and who you represent. Um, you made a comment about adding extra people. And although I think you know, Mr. Van Portfleet's uh, comments around uh, you know, the, the site being improved from its current state, I think is something that we would all like to see. Um, but you have to understand as well that not everybody in this village is willing just to want to add more and more and more people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like the small town community feel that Lake Orion is. Um, and just to piggyback again on Mr. Lamb and Mr. Van Portfleet's comments, um, I think it's a great project. Uh, I would really like to see you guys do something here. I'd really like to see an opportunity for all of us to work together to see if, you know, what we could do to make this viable. But also within the density requirements, I think that the, the villagers of this city would like to see as well. Jim, do you have anything to add? No, okay. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's a lot of talking that needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Nice meeting you all. Thank you. Seeing you guys again. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is proposed ordinance 26-108 uh, tax amendment to the zoning ordinance, article 20 violations and penalties section uh, 20.03 penalty and set public public hearing for that. Mr. Chair, yeah, Mr. is the report. intention just to set the public hearing this evening? Yes. And that would be for the next planning commission meeting? Yes. Correct? Yes. Which is the date of January. January 3rd. 3rd. So I would make a motion to set the public hearing for this tax amendment to Article 20 violations and penalties to December 3rd, 2022. Support. Sorry, January 3rd. January, January 3rd, 3rd, 2022. Thank you. Support. We have, we have a motion and we have support. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion passes. Okay, McKenna Planning and Zoning uh, Monthly Report. October 20th to November. Move to receive and file the October, November McKenna Monthly Report. We have a motion to receive and file. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to uh, um, file. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I think that, any negatives? What's that? I don't know. I saw a hand go up. Oh, no. No. I just said aye. Oh, okay. Aye, aye. <laughs> okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda is um, adopt the uh, 2022 Planning Commission meeting dates. Meeting schedule. It's, I don't see the schedule, though. Is it in here? Yes. Yeah, it's very page good. 46. Page 46, okay. Is there a motion for that? I move we approve the 2022 okay. regular meeting schedule as presented. Uh, I support and I have a question. Okay. What are the, um, what are the, um, dimmed out ones. I know they're Tuesdays, like July 5th. Why are they dimmed out? Just to bring attention to the fact they're not Mondays? Correct. Those two dates are holidays. Those Mondays are holidays. Right, right. So you just the only reason you change them is to point out that they're Tuesdays instead of... Right. Okay. Right. All right. That's my only question. Okay. All in, all in favor of the uh, 2022 proposed meeting schedule? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um... 
We have uh, commissioner comments uh, for zoning planning. Uh, oh, we already jumped past that. I didn't do that one. Um, we have commissioner comments regarding planning and zoning matters. So I think this uh, was a very good point um, that I, I was asking about. So if we have that 15 units per acre plus the 50 percent, what does that have to do with other buildings like that community center on that site? I don't know if we have anything, you know, in our plans or ordinances that said that, you know, you can have additional type buildings. I'm not against it one way or the other. I'm just not sure how we should be approaching it. Do you want to speak to it, Laura? Certainly, thank you. The PUD ordinance encourages mixed use. So the fact that they're um, proposing the commercial or the community center building um, is in line with the PUD ordinance. They could also be proposing retail or office, um, a restaurant. And their limitation is a percentage of the land. Right? They have a dwelling unit density limit, and then they have a limit of what they can build on the property. Is it 35%? Correct? For the PUD? Yeah. Uh, no. If they wanted to do commercial? If it was mixed use, there's a limit. So there's a buildable limit on the property. Right. There's I a know. limit on how many dwelling units you can have. Right. So I have. Okay. Who else? I think today. Yep. Mr. Lamb? Hi. I just want to apologize to this gentleman for interrupting his presentation. <laughs> yeah, I, um, you're great. If there are any questions, I, I'll ask you about it. And then uh, I want to thank Mr. Reard from um, recusing himself from his project. And I also wanted to thank him for supporting the, the two parking units uh, that. You know, we, we have in the village here what's good, good for the goose is good for the gander, but sometimes there's a golden goose here, and um, this project isn't really the golden goose. It's conforming to what we've been asking for, and I, I appreciate that. Um, then the River Caddis people, I, I didn't mean to kill their project, or but there are some, you know, the financing issues. I have very strong feelings about it. I brought them up to many, many of you. And I just want to point out that it's all part of an overall um, approach I have towards uh, the way the current village government is funded. And uh, I, I would be happy to see a project there that's conforming and nice and acceptable to everyone. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Van Port, please. I have two items. <clears throat> I did want to take a moment just to comment on the McKenna Memorandum regarding the findings from their attendance on October 12th, Oakland County webinar, the COVID pandemic planning changes, should they stay or should they go? And a couple of comments in here. <clears throat> One was, in general, many communities saw an increase in public participation after moving, min moving meetings online. Many communities had expressed interest in continuing with some hybrid approach which requires specialized technology, X, Y, Z. And weather created inconsistencies with the return to person meetings and some communities moved back to online meetings. And online got more voices of support than had been seen at in-person meetings where people that are most vocal to oppose show up in dispro disproportionate volumes. My point is, is that <clears throat> I'd like to see us have that opportunity again for online meetings. And I participated in a uh, uh, webinar today for municipal leaders, and there's some discussion about that being looked at at the state level again. And I, we expressed, myself and Mr. Young expressed our interest in our community being able to have that as an option going forward, and so I hope to see that possibly come around with some opportunities for 2022. I think it would be good for us on the Planning Commission. I think that was also reported on in the review. I didn't read that in the review. 
I know that right now we don't have that opportunity. Otherwise, I would have already declared a continuation of the state of emergency. Okay. And that's not an option for us right now. My only other comment is, is with these packets, we receive these plans that are a third of a sheet of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And we're expected to go online with your computer and look at it in a digital format if you'd like, depending upon your ability to how old your computer might be, if it might work that way for you, a uh, number of features. I've asked for this in the past, and I would like to ask again that we receive either an 11 by 17 full page printout, which gives us at least a partial attempt at trying to see what we're really looking at, or a 12 by 18. 12 by 18 is not abnormal in the industry. It's a quarter of the 24 by 36 sheet. It can be asked for from the developers to give us eight sets of 12 by 18s. I'd like to see that happen in the future where we could receive something that's readable, legible, usable, and gives us a better understanding of your project so that we could try to work with you. That's it for me this evening. Okay. I, I have, no, oh, Joe? Okay, I have nothing for tonight. The um, next regular planning commission is scheduled for uh, um, January 3rd, 2022. I need, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. We have a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. And then, uh, since I won't see all of you, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, you're not bringing a gift over to my house?